Hey creators, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be making this shirt. Today, I'll be showing you how to make a shirt with your own logo on it. Hello creators, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys. My name is Shayna from craftscreations.com and on this channel, we talk about all things craft related. Today's video is dedicated to teaching you how to make your own t-shirt with a logo on it using heat transfer paper. So at this time, I'll go over the supplies that you're gonna need for this tutorial. Um, actually, this video is gonna be so basic, you don't even really need anything. On this channel, I only talk about products that I actually use myself. I'll never just recommend a product that is popular right now that's everybody is trying to get. Hold on, that's not the way I wanted to word it. All of the items that I discuss on this channel are recommendations. Um, I will never talk about items that I have not personally used myself, that I have not held in my own hands. I'm only going to be talking about products that is true to my business. We have a Tim Holtz Tonic Studios picker. From Heat Press Nation. 3G Jet Opaque Heat Transfer Paper. Heat Press Nation. Of course, you're gonna need your Cricut. I'll pop a picture of a Cricut in here. And of course, the self-explanatory, self-explanatory. So of course, you're gonna need a computer. You're gonna need Cricut Design Space. You're gonna actually need a Cricut or any kind of other uh, cutting tool that you use. You're gonna need a printer and you're gonna need a cutting mat. All right, creators, let's just go ahead and jump right into the project. You're gonna go ahead and open your Cricut Design Space. You're gonna go to Create New Project. All right, so right now we're uploading our image. Go ahead and hit browse. Wherever you have your logo saved on your desktop, go ahead and click and open that right now. You're gonna be brought to this select image type page. What you're gonna wanna do is you want to toggle through each of these options to select the one that's gonna give you the best image quality when you do your print and cut. So you see here where it says simple, complex, moderately complex. I'll always normally go with complex design because it's gonna give me the best image quality. So once you're satisfied with the image, go ahead and click continue. My image was imported very large. So what I'm gonna do, I'm clicking on the bottom left-hand corner. You can zoom in or zoom out of your image. Right now I'm zooming out. I'm seeing how many inches total did the image import in and you can see that it's extremely large. It's about 17 inches right now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head to the top of the screen where it shows the inches box. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink my image down to about four inches. The reason why I'm shrinking it down to four inches is because this is gonna be a left chest logo and you don't want a 17 inch left chest logo. A common practice that people do when they wanna make multiples of anything is to write, copy, and paste, write, copy, and paste, and then they'll just fill up their entire screen. However, I wanna share with you a little trick that I do to make my process flow even smoother. So I just select one image, I go ahead and click on the green make it button, and here's my print and cut screen box right there where it says project copies go ahead and hit whatever number of however many designs you want so if you want two logos three logos four logos but not too many fit on the sheet and I'm wanting about six so I'm gonna have to go back I changed my size to three inches the top left corner after you have your page pulled up go ahead and click two see if two fits click four see if four fits click six see if six fits I'm satisfied with six, so this is what I'm gonna roll with. I have no need to click on the mirror button because this is not a iron-on, like a typical transfer vinyl. This is um, print and cut heat transfer vinyl. Once you're satisfied with your design, go ahead and click continue. Once you're satisfied with the design, go ahead and click send to printer. So at this point in the game, you wanna make sure that you use the drop-down box and select the correct printer. You see I'm not gonna click my Rolo printer because I'm not printing a label. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my photo printer, the Canon, because that's the one that's gonna give me the best results. I'm making one copy. I'm gonna click add bleed because I don't want any white to show around my logo. 
and then you're going to click use system dialog box. This is going to make it so that the printer options come up on your computer screen so that you could dial in on the settings that best fit your needs. System dialog box went ahead and opened up right there. I'm going to go ahead and click on the settings that works best for me. You're going to have to figure this out using your printer, but what works best for me and my heat transfer paper is selecting the plain paper option, best quality. All right. And then I click on print. So it's going to go ahead and print my document. Hopefully you guys are still with me. Let's roll. So my printer is located on a very high shelf in my office because you don't really need to have your printer at eye level or within easy access because for what, right? A little shaky here because I'm trying to figure out how to get a good angle. This is not on a tripod. This is freehand guys. But to the left, you'll see, I'm going to show you my husband's Gundams and his little toys that he has up there. I don't use the top shelves in my office because for what? I can't reach them. So my husband stores all his Gundams and his Legos and his fun stuff up there. So right now the document is printing out. I went ahead and printed six logos on one sheet using Cricut Design Space print and cut features. I am using a Canon 100 Pro Series printer and the quality that it yields is uncomparable. Like you cannot compare this printer to a regular everyday home printer. Your photos, your logos, your decals, whatever you're printing is gonna come out in such good quality it just speaks for itself. So now I'm going to go ahead and walk you through what's going on here. Printing cut design is fresh out of the printer. You're ready to go ahead and cut it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and place it on the Cricut cut mat. Let me go ahead and grab that. And go ahead and place it on the Cricut design mat now. When I store my Cricut mat, I always store it with the plastic cover that it came with. Do not throw that cover away, guys. You wanna save it because you don't want random hairs or fibers or lints or anything like that to get on the green sticky mat it's gonna preserve the life of your mat. So go ahead and save it. As you see, I wrote my name on it so I know which side is the correct side to put the plastic back on. When you're lining up any printing cut or any vinyl pieces that you're gonna be cutting with your Cricut, you just wanna make sure that you have it lined up with the ruler. So that's what I'm doing. I'm rubbing it out right here because I wanna make sure that there's no air bubbles that's gonna mess up the design. This is what you want it to look like. You want it to be lined up with the grid lines. You want it to be nice and flat. All right, let's head on over. So the actual cutting settings is gonna be personal preference. I'm sharing with you my preference. I use wrapping paper for a lot of my projects. So you see I'm highlighting this right here. I'm gonna use wrapping paper. As you see here, I'm using the wrapping paper settings because I just like the way that it cuts. All right, let's go ahead and head on over to the Cricut.
Whenever your project is done cutting, go ahead and click on the blinking flashing lights. It's going to unload your mat. Go ahead and carefully unload your mat. You're going to head back over to your computer, click the green finish button, and you're done with the designing and Cricut Design Space. Go ahead and close out of that and head on over to your crafting table. So your print and cut design is fresh out of the Cricut. You just want to make sure that you look over it to make sure that everything is cut properly. Actually, honestly, you want to make sure that everything is cut properly before you unload it from the machine because it's not going to line up correctly if you try to go back. So as I showed you in the beginning of this video, the tools that I'm using, I'm using the Tim Holtz plucker. I use it to carefully and precisely remove the design from the carrier sheet. So go ahead and carefully use your craft pick to remove your logo from the mat. I like to leave the printed out paper adhered to the green mat because it's almost like a third hand. It's like holding down the paper so that your white computer paper is not sliding around. Look at that design. Isn't she beautiful? Yeah, you like it. I know you do. I like it. I'm here for it. So go ahead and carefully remove your design. Check it out, make sure nothing's ripped or torn. I think she looks pretty good. I'm gonna keep her. So let's just, for the sake of this video, pretend that I went ahead and removed all six of the logos. Carefully remove your printer paper and go ahead and find that clear plastic protective sheet and put it back on your Cricut mat. After you do that, go ahead and put your Cricut mat out of the way. So the big question that everybody wants to know is how do you line up your logo? How do you make it straight? How do I know where the placement is? So everybody's burning question is how do you put a logo onto a t-shirt? How do you line it up? How do you make sure that it's not crooked? How do I know my placement? Well, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you other than I just eyeball everything. I'm not using any fancy rulers or any um, fancy products to have precise placement like I literally just use my hands I look to see where the middle of the shirt is and I look to see okay make sure it's not up in their armpit make sure it's not up all under their neck and that's where I decide that's where I'm gonna go ahead and put it thing I do have a disclaimer on my page that says everything is handmade nothing is mass produced so if you order two of the exact same things like let's say you order two of these shirts for me right now they're not going to be exactly identical because I'm a human being there's no way I can make it perfect, right? So just in case you guys are wondering like, oh my gosh, she doesn't use a ruler. Like I use my eyes and I make sure that it's lined up straight and that it, the placement makes sense and then I roll with it. All right. So after you've decided where you're going to go ahead and place your logo, go ahead and put your shirt on the heat press. You're going to press it for a few seconds just to get all the extra moisture out of the t-shirt. 
pre-press your shirt to remove any extra moisture out of the t-shirt. If you don't pre-press your t-shirts, there's a possibility that maybe your logo won't stick on all the way. I don't know, I just pre-press my t-shirts. So right now I'm doing my hand trick. This is where I'm lining it up. Just like I showed you guys two seconds ago, this is exactly how I do it. I like to use a piece of parchment paper over any of my printing cut designs because I don't want to risk having the logo get stuck to the top of my heat press. I'm not playing those games. So all right, everything's lined up. Let's go ahead and heat press our shirt. As just a safety for me, after I heat press a shirt, I'll take a little peek at it. It looks good. I'll go ahead and press it for a few more seconds just to make sure that it's really stuck on there. Go ahead and remove your shirt, shake it a little bit, help it cool down. Now just go ahead and check out your design. Make sure that you're satisfied with it. So this right here is the same clip that you just watched. However, it's at a different angle. So here's a little ASMR for you. Hope you enjoy. So creators, hopefully that was a very easy to follow tutorial. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Ding. Rock and rock and rock rock. Please like and subscribe. And bye bye. Bye bye. Sure. Bye.
Literally. say thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. We would love for you to please like and subscribe. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs>